So, I mean, the easiest way generally to get going uh, on these kinds of systems is to use Smart Setup. So this is useful for both ErieScan and for LSMs. So if I just go into here and I remove what I was previously looking at, so I just clean that up and I go into Add Channels here, then I'm able to search for specifics here. There's a big range of dyes that you can use. Um, so for the rat kidney, we will need 488 and 568. Yeah. So we'll use those. So I've got 568 here. And if I want 488, then I can use that just there. And there we go. So now the system will offer us a number of ways that it can combine these channels, depending on what our needs are for the kinds of experiments that we're doing. So for things like live cells, then the fastest is often an important choice because we want to be able to capture dynamics. Um, but we see that we might get a little bit of bleed through when we do that mm -hmm. in crosstalk. Not the end of the world, it really depends. Um, best signal separates these, so that allows us to capture the images separately with the different lasers so that we have best separations of our dyes. And then SmartS ends up giving us some kind of compromise between these two uh, involving line switching. So let's go for SmartS to start with and see what that gives us. Okay, so now you can hear the confocal just prepping itself, getting ready to operate in LSM mode. And then if we open the acquisition tab, we can now see all of our settings. Now the first thing to do is to pop it into live mode just to check our focus and see what we've got. So we can see, there we go, some rat kidney. Beautiful. Just check where our focus is, somewhere like that roughly. Do you start from live or from continuous? So I would always start from live, and the reason I would do that is the live is set to give you a 512-512 area as fast as the scanner can scan um, in a single color. So it's very, very good for finding focus very quickly. And it's very, very good if you want to be able to move around and have a little look at where you are because the refresh rate is, refresh rate is very quick. If you start to operate in continuous, you might find that you're scanning quite slowly and then finding focus and moving around is a bit sluggish because you're waiting for your screen to update. All right, but once you finally found a focus that you think you're happy with, then it's a good time to start using continuous and have a little look and start seeing what your channels look like. So here we can see the scanning is much, much slower, but now the image looks much, much nicer. If we just min-max that, so we get a decent idea of what it's done. So once it's got to the bottom, we can stop that and we can have a little look. So if I pull this display into here, and what I can do is we can have a little look at our um, histogram and see kind of you know the level of detail that we're collecting, what our gray levels are like. So at the moment, the green isn't particularly strong, but the red is okay in terms of strength. Um, ideally, if we were going to take these images, then we'd want to fill our histograms in this kind of mode. But for now, while we're just having a little look, this is fine. So to start with, we are already actually sampling properly. So we're already at confocal scanning, uh, sampling, so we can see that it's a times one sampling. But we can see here that we've, we've got quite a big frame and we've got quite a lot of pixels that we're collecting at the moment. So we might want to maybe crop the area unless we are seeing, we want a large field of view, it really depends on what we're doing. Um, right. Then we can see we've got things like scan speed by here. So we can see what our frame times are going to be. So we can control this just by pulling this bar back and forth. So we can do everything from scanning for a few minutes to scanning in a few seconds. This is really dependent on what our needs are. So if we have um, dynamic samples, then we need to scan quickly. Uh, if we have fixed samples, then maybe we can afford to scan for a bit longer just so we collect more photons and we get nicer images. Uh, we have options to do things like uh, bi-directional and monodirectional. So, uh, Generally speaking, bidirectional is pretty much twice as fast, so it's a useful way to improve your speed. Um, the only downside is it may need calibrating, but this is a, something that slowly goes out of alignment, so it's typically not too much of a problem, and there's an autocorrection available right underneath it. Then we have things like averaging that we can use. So we've got two to eight or 16 times averaging that can be used. Um, again, nice for improving your image quality. And then finally, we've got bits per pixel. So the, if you're taking images where you're just looking at um, spatial organization of cells or uh, proteins or whatever, then 8-bit is fine. But if you're going to do anything that's of a quantitative nature, then 16-bit is the way you want to go. OK, and then we'll go quickly into channels and have a little look in here. So because we've used Smart Setup, our channels have been set up for us. So when we click between these two, we can see that our lasers are already selected for us. Uh, initial laser powers have been put in for us to kind of get going. Um, but we'll notice that actually our um, our pinhole has not been set yet, so it's wide open as, as we stand. So the normal conventional 
convention for pinholes is to set them to 1AU. So this is why we have a 1AU button here. So if I just select that, and the normal convention here is that if we're doing something, uh, doing a type of imaging that doesn't allow changes of hardware in between channels, so when you're doing line scanning is a good example of that, or line switching even, then you would normally set 1AU on the reddest die that you're using. So now if we have a little look at continuous, we'll probably see a big change in the amount of signal that we're collecting, just because now we've actually got a pinhole present. But we'll see now that the detail of the actual sample has also improved quite ma and markedly as well. So this is the kind of thing we can expect. And there we go, we've got quite a nice focus plane there with a lot of detail in these kidney cells. Lovely, okay. We'll just min-max that so it's not quite so uh, saturated. Okay.